So what's required to get started? Well, six simple steps uh, which should be able to perform in five minutes. First, you need to create an account. And if you've already done that, of course, you can skip that part. Then you need to create a snapshot with source control. Then you download the connector. You run the connector and set up the settings and connect to your database. You select the snapshot to connect to. And then you start your service. So how does it look like? Well, uh, first you download the zip file with the connector, and after that you just run the connector. And first time it looked like this. So what you do is you log in, and it will ask you to confirm your device, and then also to log in. So we should now be all set. So we go back. We select the login button here, confirm the device again. And now it connects to our source control and to the object analyzer. And it will now list if I have already have any source control set up already or any snapshots with or without source control. I can now click install to the service if I want to do that and also start the service and it will be running. So the next thing I need to do is now click Create. And now I can select my client. If I want to do that, it could be if I'm my partner, I want to have different partner, different clients created here. I select them here. If I don't, I just select my product version. It could be an 18, I select my country version. It could be a German version, for example, localization. And I will now enter a description. Availability, I can select everybody should be able to access. Group of users or only myself. Creation date will be specified. I can select the version and some kind of description. In the right side, I will have to specify the date and time format. And this date and time is the format of the exported object. So if you have a local computer, it will pick up the date and time from your local settings here. But if you're running on a server, it will actually take the settings on the local system. And it can be a little bit complicated to find that information. So on the current computer, we'll both state the name, date format, and the time format. So we can see in this case, even I have European format here, the server is actually running on American format, the month slash date slash year, year, year. And the time is in 12 hour with AM, PM. So that I have to select here to make sure I get the objects into the right format. Like that, and select 12 hours. And I click Create. When that is done, I can now go back to my connector, refresh, and now it is displayed here, the new one I just created. And I can start to do my setup. What I need to specify is the database server name. You, so you can go and pick it up from here, database information, and you can sort of, for example, copy it from here if you want to do that. That's one way of doing it. And you select from here and copy back, and you select the path as well. Then you can also select license swapping. So when will you use that feature? Well, in the case where you have a client, for example, which do not have the right license, or you have some development or test environment where you're actually using the client license, but to export the object, you actually need a developer license. Then you can use a silent license swapping in the background. So you select the alternative license, specify the path to the license, and if you want to swap it on the server or on the database. When done, you select my computer, to where you want to run it. You select the update frequency, how often you want to update. And this could be like every second, every minute, every hour. When done, click save and you're good to go. The only thing you have to do is to restart the service because the settings will only be read once when you have clicked save.